Hi, everybody. Hi, Rosa and Teresa. Hello, everyone. Welcome Hi. to this month's episode of the GTTP webinars um, for teachers. Uh, this episode is following up on a webinar that we had with the Night Sky Network. Um, and it was all about the women who trained to be Apollo astronauts back in the 60s. And it was a fabulous webinar. And you can find the link where you found this video. Um, and uh, so to follow up on that, uh, we thought we would talk about how um, learning has, uh, how learning research has shown us more effective ways to engage um, students and girls in particular in science. And to do that, we have Teresa Summer here with us. Teresa and I work together at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. And Teresa has been an astronomy educator for a couple of decades now, I think, close to 20 years. And she's been a classroom teacher. She has worked in planetariums and museums. And currently she's working on the um, Girl Scout project that we have through NASA called Reaching for the Stars. And uh, her work with that has focused on um, helping develop badges for Girl Scouts and also training amateur astronomers um, to work better with girls and be more encouraging of girls learning um, at the telescope. So I am excited to get to hear what she has to say, and she's got a neat presentation for us today. I'm going to turn it over to you, Teresa. Welcome. Thank you, Vivian. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to share this information and we're, that we're looking at this process right now because um, it's certainly an, an inequity that we haven't become almost accustomed to and it's going to start addressing it now. Um, so I want to talk about um, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Um, and before we get into that, I want to talk about how um, the presentation about the, the Mercury 13 astronauts ties in with that. Um, if you got to watch that webinar, you saw that there were women that were trained to be in the space program, but didn't quite make it to actually ever go into space. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why you might think that that happened. Um, and if you want to learn more, you should watch that webinar. But um, let's talk about how those same forces are in play right now. So. Um, we have a lot of stereotypes in our brains that um, somehow associate science with maleness. Um, for example, when we go to the classrooms, we do an exercise where we have uh, the children draw a scientist or an astronomer, and we don't use any language that says that it's male or female. We just say the astronomer does this, the astronomer does that. Um, and, at the, and they're supposed to draw the astronomer, and so I brought some examples of what they think the astronomer might look like. Um, here's two examples, if you can see this. Here's a person at the telescope, very nice drawing of them holding a rocket. Kind of the standard Einstein image that we have with the crazy hair. Um, of course, it happens to be a white male. Here's a, another one, uh, again with a telescope, because we mentioned that in the activity. Um, this time wearing a lab coat. So we have these set ideas about what a scientist is. Um, and one of those things that happens when you have a stereotype is that it kind of makes girls and women that are interested in doing science feel like they don't belong. Um, I'm not going to address the issues of women aren't good at science or equal in abilities in science. There's lots of data that show that women have equal ability and equal interest. What they might not have is that sense of belonging um, or, or confidence that comes from ex repeated exposure um, to science. So a great thing is that we also have research that shows that the way you change your mindset and the way that teachers change their mindset can affect the way that um, students and learners can um, achieve. 
So that's where I'm going to go into this idea of fixed mindset versus growth mindset. And this is work that's really been done in the last 20 to 30 years, um, mainly by Carol Dweck, um, who is a psychologist, but she also has done a lot of great science about um, testing. And he, she wants to know why students, some students do well in tests and some students do poorly. And so what she um, discovered was that if students had gone into things with this idea that they are either good at something or not good at something, that they, regardless of whether they said they were good or bad at it, they did poorly. <laughs> so um, this idea of a fixed mindset is either that you're good at art or you're a math person. Um, we have a lot of these phrases that we say, um, and what that leads to is when there's a challenge or something that occurs, people will have this desire to be seen as smart or whatever characteristic they think that they have. For example, I say that I'm smart, so I need to prove that I'm smart. And if there's a challenge to me being smart, I will avoid that or try to squash anybody who thinks that they're smarter than me, <laughs> so that, um, than I am, sorry. Um, if there's effort and practice that's involved, you really feel like you wanna avoid that because it's a natural thing that you have. You're just smart, you're gonna pick it up. And if you don't pick it up, it's just because, oh, I'm not really an artsy person. So that's what we would call a fixed mindset. And we, um, Carol Dweck found that that was something that was not um, helpful for students. What she found um, was the idea of a growth mindset that you, learning comes from effort made students feel that they could learn anything that they wanted to. And when they were faced with a challenge, they were excited by the challenge because it was a chance to learn and grow. Um, and it helped them persist when there was a setback or an obstacle, they were able to rise to the challenge. And this um, helped them to learn from criticism. It helps um, to not plateau at a certain level and to also encourage the collaboration that we have in science. For example, when, um, you know, if you have a fixed mindset and you're trying to prove you're smart, you might not listen to other people um, when they have different ideas um, because it seems like you're not as intelligent. Whereas if you have a growth mindset, you're going to say, this is an interesting idea. How can I incorporate that into my learning? Uh, any questions so far from the audience? <laughs> uh, I have just a comment. I think that is uh, very interesting because uh, this was something that I was hoping that uh, we could uh, discuss uh, in, uh, today, which is the way we, at a global level, drive the students to interact with us. The teacher, the traditional method, uh, uh, does not incentivize that. So. This is truly important, you know, because in, 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 in fact, you are shaping the way those people are going to behave in the future. And that is truly important. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and so when we are um, talking about how you can make mistakes and that they're part of the growth process, you can um, succeed. You can feel inspired. Um, you can try a different strategy if something doesn't work. And what that does is um, opens up the field of science tremendously because it's not just one type of person that succeeds. It's any person that tries different strategies that can apply effort, that can work hard. And so making mistakes, instead of being an outsider thing, oh, you don't know what you're doing, it becomes a, great, you made a mistake. Let's find a new way, because now we know that this doesn't work. Let's try a new strategy. So um, it's a really interesting idea. It's really only something I've been looking at myself for the last year or two um, as I've been exploring this um, Girl Scout grant and, and working with it. Um, 
to try to figure out myself. It's an interesting lens to view the world. So um, now that we have this idea that this is a great practice for teaching, how do we use language to incorporate it into the classroom? Um, and so when I do this activity, I do it more with other learners, um, like other um, astronomers that are trying to do outreach um, to uh, so it's more training the trainers thing, but you could modify it to be um, something you do with your students or something you do with your fellow teachers if you want to share the information. So um, what we have online, I believe, is a, um, a paper that has these cards. So, um, and this is something you would print out before you do the activity. And um, you can see sort of, you can keep one as a key, but um, it has fixed mindset and growth mindset. And it has specific language that you can use to help you, um, help you think about how to frame these ideas in the classroom or wherever you are. And so, um, after you print out this key, you will cut each one of these up onto a cardstock similar to this so that you can see. This is one of the things. I, I actually am seeing it. Are you guys seeing it in the correct thing? Okay. I have the mirror image, so it's backwards. But, um, and then, so after you have the cards, the other thing you need to do is print out uh, for each group, a, um, so, a sorting grid where you're going to have it say fixed mindset, not sure, or growth mindset. And um, then it's a fairly standard sorting activity. I'm going to try to share my that screen that I showed you guys earlier. So, can you see the screen? What we have is, like I said on the top, it says fixed mindset, not sure, and growth mindset. And so this one says, would you make up your mind and get this done, right? So um, that's something you might say to a student who's kind of doing their own thing for a bit, right? Um, and that sort of shows that there's one way to do things. Um, so. Uh, maybe they're trying different approaches because they're they're stuck with a problem if they're doing things that are outside of the activity they might feel blocked or they might be trying things within the activity that isn't what you're expecting so um, you keep making mistakes could be something that's the in the not sure right if you say you keep making mistakes that's great that would be in the growth mindset category. But if you say, oh, you keep making mistakes, what's wrong with you? Then it might be in the fixed mindset category. Um, and of course, in the growth mindset section, it also says, I like how you keep trying new ways to get there. Um, so those are some, some pieces of sort of how you would sort the activity. Um, and then one other thing I wanna share while I have uh, the screen there, is this idea that um, what we did with the little bit on the bottom is we had people write in their own um, mindset for their, their class or their activity. So we mainly did this activity with amateur astronomers. And so what we had at the bottom of the paper, I, I just noticed at the bottom of the paper there's this space here and I cut it along this thing. So we had two blank pieces of paper at the bottom and I thought, oh, well, they can just write in their own growth mindsets that's related to their field. So um, if you are a math teacher, maybe you want to write something that's encouraging a growth mindset about math, or maybe you want to put something in about history that you can use directly in the classroom. So this person put, that's a good question. Here are some tips to help you understand the night sky if they were asking something at the telescope. Or um, the other thing that they put in terms of not knowing at the telescope said, 
oh, well, little girls don't know how to look through the eyepiece. Um, I also wanted to use that as a reminder for myself. Um, so little girls or little kids in general sometimes can't use an eyepiece because they're not developmentally, developmentally there yet. So, and that's okay. Um, having growth mindset is not going to change someone's, um, uh, if you have um, a learning disability, it's not gonna make it disappear. Um, but what it can do is help you use other strategies that work with your disability to help you get through things. Um, I don't wanna say that, um, that, that um, real issues aren't, aren't there. As my friend says, no matter what my attitude is, I can't change a uh, stairs into a ramp. <laughs> right? So we need to address the, the realities of, of different challenges that are there um, and not ignore those challenges, but also say, okay, this strategy doesn't work. Let's try something different. Um, and having that ability will hopefully um, allow for girls and other underserved groups to um, succeed in at least in their own idea of owning their problem solving capabilities. And that will be the first step to being able to say, I can do science, I can solve problems, I can um, take on this challenge. Um, I think I'll stop there and uh, see what you guys Great. know more about. Well, I have a few comments uh, about that. I think it's a, it's a great uh, teaser for the mind to have people think about things that uh, we usually say without thinking, why am I saying that? You know, why, why am I doing that? I have a three-year grandson, three-year grandson, and uh, I very frequently find myself looking at him and saying, my tendency would be to tell him not to do it, but why? Why do I have this? Why would I prevent him from making a mistake? What's wrong with that? I mean, unless it might be harmful to him, you know, he has to learn somewhere. And, and I very often, when, when we train teachers, for instance, I see the result of them being raised with fear from mistakes. You ask a question and there's silence in the room. You know immediately that those people in the room have been brought using the traditional, the traditional way of teaching. They are scared to make mistakes. I am scared of making mistakes all the time. And when I realize I did a mistake, I feel awful. And in fact, this is a, such a human thing. You know, it's good that you have, uh, that, that you make mistakes and that you embrace them. So I don't want my grandson to grow in an environment where making mistakes is wrong. You know, honest mistakes, I think, are a very, very good thing. And, um, and one thing that uh, it's, uh, so just attaching this to another topic uh, that I find also very interesting is that uh, at a global level, we find these discussions about, these discourses about how we bring girls to science. We don't have that problem so much in Portugal, for instance. There are many girls, I think it's, uh, I like the number of girls and boys willing to uh, continue to science career. So what is it that makes the difference, you know? And uh, I, I see also, I, I visit many countries across the world and um, it, it makes me feel horrible when I see in some developing countries, for instance, that girls wouldn't even think that they might have a chance or possibility or even permission to think about a career in science. You know, so what are we doing wrong, you know, that uh, we should be doing in order to, to, to embrace those girls? And I adore that activity that you showed where the kids designed the scientists according to their views. And uh, I would, you know, I don't know, maybe that's a challenge. We should launch a global challenge where we would invite kids from all over the world to do the drawing and uh, compare the results across the world. You know, how that comes across. Is that a global thing? Is that related to development or not? It's related to, to what? How that comes across. And uh, maybe articulate some actions to to focus on those countries where the stereotype is uh, 
more intense. Maybe we can ask uh, teachers to do the same drawing. Maybe we would be shocked to see what teachers would do, you know, when drawing what a scientist looks like, you know. I think uh, Vivian, we, yeah. we have to go for this challenge. I've, I've been discussing all the time with Vivian, what should we do next? I think that would be a, an awesome challenge, you know, just we should. send us your drawing, you know, International Day of uh, Scientist Drawing and see what comes out of that, you know? Um, question too, on along those lines, Rosa, that um, often in places that have fewer resources, making mistakes is not encouraged because there's no safety net. Because, uh, so in your daily life, there is not an encouragement to make mistakes because it can have devastating consequences for mm -hmm. fewer resources. And also for women who maybe not, won't get an opportunity again to try things. Precisely. So, um, it's, I think that encouraging making mistakes in science is a very new challenge for some people because it's a, it can be a safe place to make mistakes and okay, you can try an experiment and, and it's okay if this fails, and, but it, that can look very different from your everyday life. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true in many. I want to add that this is it's not easy work to change your thinking is is hard and there's going to be certain places where where it's really hard if you're an expert at something you have a lot of buy-in to being an expert right mm -hmm. so it's hard to to be wrong in those places um it's hard to say oh there might be something i don't know or there might be i might make a mistake about this um mm -hmm. And, and it's not that you're going to all of a sudden be like, oh, this is the great way to do it. So I'm just going to change everything about myself, no. you know. No. Um, no. And uh, the, the, for teachers, for instance, making a mistake uh, might be horrible because, uh, you know, the students are going to say, oh, my teacher made a mistake. And because, this, because of this culture of not making mistakes, of mistakes are wrong, that perpetuates itself, you know, which is a very wrong place to be. I mean, it's okay for a teacher to make a mistake. And if the, the students spot it, oh, super cool. That's and that's correct, great, you know. That's a great yeah. modeling step, right? Exactly. You exactly. can have that teachable moment of, yeah, I, I made a mistake. That's exactly, exactly. So my grandson keeps correcting me in a few things. I know simple things like this is not how you do my food or that is not the proper channel or uh, I, I should, uh, the, that's not, not the number. You cannot find the, the movie I want or this is not where you look or he corrects me. And I think, you know, we empower him to do so because if he knows better than we do, then that's perfect, you know. <laughs> the only difference between him and me is the experience. Well, I hope 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 he will be smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, so there is going to be a lot of differences. But uh, you know, the experience is what counts, and this is what we are sharing. You know, it's not about I am good, you're not, because I I don't make mistakes and you do. This is a horrible place to be. You know how we got that experience by making all those mistakes. <laughs> precisely, precisely, precisely. I had a, a mechanics a teacher who taught me motorcycle mechanics. And he said, I have made every single mistake possible. You can ask me anything and I can tell you how not to do it. <laughs> well, he has stuck with me more than most teachers. You know, when you think about women and uh, the skills we should have, you know, I can show you all, all possible, unimaginable ways of failing miserably in baking a cake. <laughs> I, I think I mastered in making mistakes. Or I can show you mistakes in navigating across the world and finding my way around. How many mistakes a person can do? I'm so good at that, you know. And well, these are the things. Know that... How to bake a cake now and how to travel well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is great. I have to say, too, I wanted to mention that I've seen this um, activity that Teresa is doing in action, and the real benefit of it is the conversations that come up around. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when people are discussing where things go, and there are often very different ideas about what a sentence means to different people. And I think it's interesting, and often it's good to do in mixed groups of um, boys and girls, or men and women, um, to see how we interpret a simple phrase very differently often. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I wonder, would encourage you just to try it even around the dinner table. 
to see what uh -huh. you think. It's an interesting um, exercise. I wonder how what effect it would have in a classroom where the children would write down the the questions and answers from the teacher. Where would they put the different statements, you know? Yeah. There was a little activity I used to do in the planetarium where I had an Ori, um, which is, a, you know, where you have the sun and the um, the planets around it, usually on like metal poles or metal strings. And I would say, well, what is this? And all the kids would say, it's the solar system, or half of them would say, and, and I would say, no, it's not the solar system. It's a model of the solar system. And then they had a great time pointing out what was wrong with the model. So I'd say, what's, what's wrong with this model? And, and then I say, well, why did I even bring this out here if there's so many things wrong? And then they would say, well, then I would say, these are some reasons that are good with models and some things that are not so good about models. And we have to look at things with that eye of what, what is good about it and what is not so good about it. And, and it's part of our science brain, right, to, mm -hmm. to analyze things. Um, so hopefully that will help people who might not look at science and say, hey, maybe I can do different things that I, I told I can't. Mm -hmm. So, just uh, for information, uh, in the GalileoTeachers.org uh, website, you, you will find the link for this uh, webinar and you will also find the link for, for the materials in English and in uh, Portuguese. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think they might be in editable format, so you can even translate it uh, to your own language. And if not, and you do want to translate it to your own language, that applies to all the webinars that we uh, promoted so far and all the ones coming forward. If you want to translate that to your language, just let us know, uh, drop us a note, and uh, we will make sure that uh, this is available to you. Thanks, you guys. That was really fun. Thanks, Teresa, for sharing it. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Vivian, for promoting this. You guys are amazing, as always. You too, Rosa. Happy spring. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> Bye.